In this lesson, we're going to talk about drip line with check valves molded into them. In the major category of drip line, or the type of drip irrigation tubing that has the drip emitters molded in at specific intervals, there's also a type that you can get that has a check valve also molded into each of the drippers so that when the zone shuts off and the pressure gets below a certain point, the check valves activate and it traps water in that 12, 18, or 24 inch spacing between the emitters. Basically, it's for water efficiency so that you know all of the water is not draining out the lowest emitters. And usually this is used in a situation where you have some slope or uneven runs. And this helps keep the water from draining out the lowest emitters and causing an uneven canopy height. Imagine if you had a bit of a slope, maximum lengths on your lateral lines, and then when the system shuts off, the two, three, four drippers at the bottom of the slope are continuing to drain out the water, so those plants are going to get more water than the stuff up at the top of the slope. So we use check valve products. We can also use pressure compensating drippers to help uh, compensate for that pressure difference, which can cause a little bit of difference in your precipitation rate through each of the emitters. But pressure compensating emitters help with that, but a check valve product also it helps with the water that's in the line after it shuts off. Now there's a couple of different manufacturers that make drip line, either a non-CV or a CV product, and you're going to find a couple of different configurations or strengths in the check valve. Let's talk for just a second about what a check valve actually is. I've got a couple of illustrations here for you, and the first one we're looking at is a check valve in the closed position, and basically all the check is is a ball or a poppet or something that will stop the flow of water. It's usually under spring pressure, and that spring may have a strength of 2 PSI or 4 PSI or whatever it is. We'll talk about those numbers in just a second. So when the valve is off, the zone is off, and no water is moving through the pipes, once the pressure in the line drops down below the threshold, then the check valve closes. So no water is going to move through it. But when we turn the zone back on, and we'll take a look at this next illustration here, is the, the valve is now on, the zone is on, the line is under full pressure, and the pressure in the line has overcome the strength of that spring and has pushed it back, and now water is flowing normally through the pipe. Now, I'm not saying this is exactly how a check valve in CV drip line works. I just want you to be aware of the concept in general. We'll get into some more specific types of check valves when we get into our backflow prevention course, but that's a little ways down the road. So we just want you to kind of know what's happening here when a check valve shuts off when the pressure in your drip zone drops down below the intended limit, say it's you know 2 or 4 PSI. Now, um, if I'm not mistaken, Rainbird's uh, check valves are at 3.5 PSI, and that'll hold back up to 8 foot of elevation drop, right? We know that water picks up 0.433 PSI for every foot of elevation drop that it goes down, so it could hold back up to 8 feet. NetFM, their um, check valves, I believe, are... 2 PSI, which can hold back 4.6 feet of water. So look at these different products and decide which one's best for you. But not all manufacturers have both CV and non-CV products. If I'm not mistaken, all of Toro's products are non-check valve, and all of Hunter's product have check valves with no option for a non-check valve product. Now, I could be wrong about that, but looking through the catalogs and through the internet, that is a conclusion that I've come to. You know, Generally, when we're dealing with our suppliers, sometimes you have to you know, get what's on hand or know about your product or your project far enough in advance to order in what you want. And it's becoming harder and harder to get your hands on exactly what you want since the recession in 2007, 2008, a lot of the suppliers have scaled back the amount of inventory that they keep on hand. Now that's not only in this industry, but a lot of industries have done that and just, just a, a way of keeping less money invested in your parts. 
Now, the reasons that we do this have kind of partially been mentioned so far, but it's really a water conservation. If you're paying for the water, for one, you don't want all of the water draining out the lowest head and causing some erosion or runoff there or whatever, especially if you're paying for it, it's a good idea to get the check valves that hold the water in there so that the next time the system comes on, these pipes are already fully charged up with water and ready to commence dripping. So that's one of the reasons. But also, if you're using drip line or a truly any irrigation product near a walkway, a motorway, or anywhere in a residential or commercial application that water could possibly drain across that walkway and cause a liability issue, that's something that you really need to take into consideration. Especially in this day and age where people just love to sue each other, uh, love to get the lawyers involved. If I had, uh, if it was my system and any water at all was draining out, especially onto a walkway, I would address that. Now, check valve product is one of the ways that we do that with the drip irrigation. It keeps all the water from draining out the lowest emitter, like we've mentioned before. So it's really a, a good investment if you need that product. I mean, it's really no more expensive than the, the other products, but it takes a little bit more doing. And we need to think about the temperatures that we're in. See, in my markets that I work in, we're in kind of a temperate zone to where it, it freezes during the winter, but not so much that people are concerned with it. It's really a, a low ROI or, or return on investment to have somebody blow out the systems with compressed air here. Now in the northern states and northeast, I know for sure that nearly all of those systems up there have a, an air compressor hooked to it and then the lines are evacuated with air. And if you're using a check valve product in an area that has any freezing at all, then I would make sure that you have a provision for air evacuation at the end of the season. Now, like I said here, we don't do that. Nobody considers it as necessary. They just generally just wait and fix whatever freezes at the end of the year. And, and truly less than 2% of my clients experience any freeze damage. So a lot of people don't even shut their systems off. But here, they started to switch over to all CV product in the supply houses. So I know that in my area, there's a lot of contractors out there that are installing check valve drip lines with no provision for winterization. I know that if there were provisions for winterization, we'd see people out with air compressors and all that at the end of the year, and truly nobody does it. So the best thing to do is to use a non-CV product in these situations with a vacuum relief valve and or a flush valve, which will allow that water to come out of the zone to drain down and not have a full pipe just waiting for a freezing temperature to burst it. So, you know, every year I have to do a little bit of repairs to drip lines and stuff from freeze damage, but you can tell the ones that have a lot of freeze damage and they just have splits all over. And I think it's from using check valve products in an area which really would need to have that water evacuated from the system. So I hope this caveat has impressed upon you enough to think about the climate, the temperature that you're in, and what product that you're going to use, not just pick up whatever drip line is available. Now, obviously, you have to choose the, the uh, emitter spacing, the flow rate, and all that, but check valve or non-check valve is a critical choice in your products.